have a question for you. How much does it cost to stand upright? Does anyone here have the answer to that question? I'm not too sure anyone has the answer to that question. And besides, could it be that the answer differs based on the individual? In 1978, researchers asked themselves the same question. What they found out was that standing upright increases both heart rate and blood pressure. In 2016, the question is, could it be that how we move, how we learn, and how we think is interconnected? to move better. Are we really in control of our movements? If it's true that we organize movements with the frontal lobe, this is based on how we perceive the environment. And so, would you think that the strategy to move is the same whether we stand on ice, on sand, or in the mud? In 1998, neuroscientist J.P. Roll published on the role of the skin of the foot. What he found out was that we use inputs from the skin of our feet to stand upright and to move. And so, knowing this, how do you think this foot stance contributes to posture? In 1985, a technique entitled Posturology was born. And Posturology's aim is to stimulate the feet and the eyes with innovative technology and exercises to allow someone to stand upright optimally, and this is the kicker, without them having to actually think about it. These are the types of results achieved by posturologists across the world. These are specifically from PosturePro, our research center here in Montreal. What you see here is what's possible with posturology. To learn better. How would you say movement and academics are related? Well, movement and academics actually share a common organ. That organ is called the cerebellum. It is postural muscles that are responsible for turning on the cerebellum. And postural muscles are the ones we use to stand upright. So knowing this, when looking at these two individuals, which one do you think benefits from optimal information being sent from their muscles to the cerebellum in order to light up the entire brain? If it's true that the cerebellum turns on the motor areas of the brain, the cerebellum also turns on the language areas. And so what you have to understand is that with a postural imbalance, it's the entire brain that doesn't get lit up to its full potential. And it is both movement and learning that suffer. Now, to turn on postural muscles, one needs to resist a force. And that force is the force of gravity. So the question is, what happens when there's no gravity? In 1999, researchers actually looked at that what they did is they scrutinized 29 different studies looking at six different cognitive measures. What they found out was that while in space, cognitive measures actually do appear to be affected. Meanwhile, here on Earth, in 2006, researchers studied the brains of adults with ADHD. What they found out is that there was a particular brain area that was smaller. And that area was for both movement, and attention. That area was indeed the frontal lobe. And so, the next time you think of a learning disability, will you be able to think of this versus this? To think better. If it's true that the frontal lobe is really important for movement and learning, it's also critical in how we manage emotions. In 2015, researchers, again, studied the size of the brains, now this time of individuals that had a hard time managing stress, 
Now, I'm not too sure where they found those people. They must be really hard to find. But what they did is that they looked at the size of the brains of those people. Now, in people that had a hard time managing stress, the frontal lobe was smaller. The frontal lobe was also smaller in individuals that were affected with antisocial personality disorder as well as borderline personality disorder. In 2015, Amy Cuddy, in her famous TED Talk, spoke about power poses. And what she was able to prove was that by adopting these power poses, we could increase testosterone and decrease cortisol, which is the stress hormone. So my thought is this. What if we could create power postures where people walk around morning to night with optimal alignment, their hormonal profile improved, and again, the kicker, without them having to actually think about it. Well, the question was, how much does it cost to stand upright? And this is 2016. The real question is, if this is possible, then are you ready for posturology? Thank you.